I grew up right here in Austin, Minnesota, uh, and you know, waking up every morning and smelling the bacon curing, and <laughs> I was surrounded by people that lived, worked, managed, had farms. My best memories are of that kind of big family around that, that table, uh, enjoying a, a home-cooked meal. Food to me, my first earliest memory was going back to Indiana, working on my uncle's hog farm, and then going back to my grandmother's house to have a big cookout, which brings people together, and then making homemade ice cream. Uh, so we've got some beautiful pork chops here, center cut, loin chops. Uh, they're cut about an inch thick. Everything good comes from a pig. Absolutely. I love the fact that agriculture is our foundation. I belong to H Farm, which is the agricultural resource group here at Hormel. Our resource group is really about making sure people connect the family farming to the end product we deliver to our consumers. It's a great group to belong to. We're gonna stick these off to the side for about an hour and a half okay. or so. And while those are brining, as we call it, we'll cut up some of these vegetables here. Okay. So in my time in uh, Boston, Minnesota, uh, I grew up here. My uh, father worked for Hormel for about 40 years. My wow. brother. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? That's Only awesome. Only company he ever worked for from college. Impressive. So why aren't you with Hormel? That's a tough Just one. Just throwing it out yeah, there, Yeah, no Ryan. kidding. I was sitting in... Uh, uh, economics 101 in college, the University of Minnesota in Duluth, and uh, I literally stood up in the middle of class and walked to the registrar's office, dropped my classes, and I was in culinary school in West Palm Beach about four months later. Got under a great chef initially, um, tucked me under his wing, kind of showed me not just the cooking side, but also the financial side and, and the business aspect of it. It happened really, really fast after that. I mean, it was one job to the next job, and the next thing you know, I'm in Beijing at the Olympics or at the Masters, and that's that pausing moment where you stop and go, what, how did I do that? <laughs> so mushrooms, everything we're gonna cut up, we want it to be small. We're really kind of using that spinach for as kind of a, it's kind of the binder for all these mushrooms and little bits, it kind of wraps around it and holds it all together with the, the cheese that we're gonna put in there. Okay, you make it look a lot easier than I do. Well, maybe. But I guess that's why her. you're the chef, right? Yeah, yes. I'm certainly not in HR. You do it. Hey, you know what, though? Tell me. HR is awesome. Yeah, I agree. Because you get to work with people. I'm inspired every day when I wake up, and I can make an impact on somebody else because I want to leave a footprint. Right? My footprint is with people. What we're doing here next is taking some of this Wisconsin cheese. This is uh, uh, actually Fontina. Okay. And we're gonna grate this up oh, a cup or so in there. Do you use any cheese in this recipe or is this the go-to? It depends on what you use for a reducer. I've got okay. sherry wine here. Uh, sherry or a port go really well with Fontina. Um, you know, there's nothing to say you can't use an IPA and cheddar. We'll get all this in here. That'll go into a pan. Beautiful. So we've got a preheated pan here. Okay. We're gonna add the butter. Some butter. We don't want to burn the butter. But so we what's want it nice the trick? Butter. Because I always burn butter. You know, you can add a little bit of oil to it, and oh. it'll raise the smoke point. Okay. So I'm a mom now. I'm in that era of my life. Yeah. The only time I know what my kids are doing is dinner. People are brought together by food. That's where we share and catch up. We become so busy these days. I know as a mother, I depend on that family dinner to figure out what my family's doing because we're all going so many different directions. And it just feels like home. So this looks great. We're gonna add a little bit of seasoning. It smells so good. Looks beautiful, right? Yeah. What is the distinct smell that I'm smelling, Brian? So the shallots, we a lot in. Yeah, shallots are great. They, they've got a, a pretty potent onion flavor, but what's happening here is all the mushrooms, all the liquids cooking out of the mushrooms and it's absorbing all that okay. flavor. Uh, now we're gonna add the wine. Oh, so, may I hand that to you? I, I wish you'd just pour it in there. I would love that. Absolutely. All in one spot or can I be creative? You do you. So this looks beautiful. This is exactly where we want it. Okay. There's just a little bit of liquid left in there. Take this over there, add the cheese to it. Okay. And stuff some pork chops. All right. So it's about done now. Okay. Things have sauteed. See just a little bit of 
a little bit of moisture mm -hmm. through there. You know, I think for so many people, cooking and food and things, you know, like we're doing today, it's just tied to family. It is. And friends. Friends and the, the camaraderie and the social aspect of it. So we've cut these little pockets into these pork chops um, that's obviously going to house some of the stuffing. We're going to add some of this. Okay, so you add it right to cheese. that. I add it right okay. in there. Kind of holds it all together. Now, is there a trick not to overstuff? Yeah, you, you want to be of... able to, to to purse it closed. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to skewer that. Okay. Uh, to hold it closed. When you cook these, that pork is going to try and open up a little bit as the moisture comes out. These will not take long at all because you're basically adding that stuffing in the middle so it's not it's no longer thick. that great big thick pork chop it's two smaller ones that are sort of held together so we will take this skewer and it's going to go just like this right through kind of like a taco yep exactly all right so now we've got our pork chop set ready to go okay seasoned stuffed beautiful brined we're going to take them over to the stove top and uh put a nice sear on them nice right Alright, so that goes on nice and sizzly. You want to get the other one in there? Right next to it? Sure. Yep. So I'm putting it kind of at a little angle. That's another trick because we're just going to sear. It's going to make those grill marks, okay. right? Okay. So to, and, it's all about presentation. Yeah. And then in a minute, we'll give it a little quarter turn to give the nice crosshatch mark. Hormel is probably one of the most diverse and engaging organizations I've been a part of. Being part of helping to feed the world, I believe brings passion. When I think of being within a human resource function, I don't think I'd be as passionate creating widgets as I do creating a meal-inspired cuisine for somebody to sit down and build memories with their families at home. So you just want a light sear. Yep. Boy, they're beautiful. Just, Look just at the long enough to, to hatch marks. And these are just gonna go right into the oven, really not much longer than couple minutes. Okay. Now we're just finishing. Awesome. And, that, and how long and are they in there? Maybe four or five minutes max. That's it? Yeah, because we want a nice medium well, okay. not overcooked. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. My name is Morgan Core. I work at the corporate office for Hormel Foods. Well, obviously food is very important. Everybody has to eat. And I like to say that life is too short for boring food. For every holiday, we always go to my grandparents' house. It's all about nostalgia. It's all about um, that, that feeling of being a little kid again, um, that feeling of the world being a much smaller place for me to just go to grandma's, run around with my cousins, just have fun. Um, know that I'm gonna eat the same meal now that I did 10, 15 years ago. Um, just kind of brings it all back. My name is Alan Meyergerd, and I am the product manufacturing manager of fresh and value added pork. So I grew up on a farm, a farrow to finish operation, and in that operation, then my dad and I would bring pigs to Hormel 12 at a time on the, on the back of a pickup. Uh, that's where my roots are from. Um, th that means that I still have that tie back to the farm even though I'm not there on a daily and regular basis. But I'm doing my part to feed the world as well. All right, guys. Yum. Yeah, so we finally uh, have our beautiful pork chops here. Fennel, dusted, uh, wild mushroom and fontina stuff. Wow. Pork chops, mm -hmm. right? Very good. Alan, you so, want to serve us up? Yeah, we paired absolutely. this up with green chili, loaded mashed potatoes. So Ooh. it's got a little tangy. Do I see bacon on the top? Not only bacon, that's jalapeno bacon. Jalapeno Over cured bacon. Top. Oh right yeah. With the Over green the chilies, top. cheddar cheese, wow. diced green onions, absolutely. Mm. Everything's better with bacon. Dessert, Morgan, you have in front of you there. Uh-huh. Is uh -huh. a, <laughs> it's a peanut butter and Spam chocolate chip cookie. Oh. That's that's heaven. How come yeah. they're by her? Because I'm gonna eat I figured all that was the, the safest place. <laughs> yeah. You don't want yeah. to find me. So I, I'm down cooking. cooking. It is comfort, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So I have to right. try your the potatoes, potatoes first, first, right? Right. Yeah. I'll let you know if they're spicy enough. Look at that. That has beautiful flavor. That's tasty. Mm -hmm. mm. The food takes you to a happy place. And what is that happy place? It's very different for everybody. There's the, the raspberry jam, where we hand pick the raspberries from my mom's garden. It might be that pork chop that we put on a plate 
That's something significant to my family. Just the smells, the aromas of that takes you to that place as not only a child, but gatherings with family and friends. People are conscious about what's going into their bodies and where it's coming from and, you know, was it altered? Was it uh, caged? Was it you know, organic? I mean, run the gamut. To me, it's very important for my family to know where food comes from. My kids were both born in Nashville, Tennessee, raised in a city. They don't have some of the experiences I had as a child with being exposed to family farms. I don't ever want my kids to think their meat comes from a grocery store or their milk. They go to, oh, well, we just get that in the, the cooler section. I need them to understand there's a whole different industry and a whole nother life that sustains people that produce those raw materials for us than to use and incorporate into our meal choices. It, it has become so much more popular because the agricultural world is now telling their story better. Um, and we're, we're okay with it. We want people to understand that. Go ahead and pass this around here. These look phenomenal. She touched two, so that means two. Oh, uh, right. She has two. Yeah. She did that on purpose, you know. There we go. Well, I really appreciate you spending time with us and I'm sharing stories here. and experiences and I now know how to stuff a pork chop much better than I did before today. Um, Happy to help. And it's been great getting to know you. Likewise. And I'm really thankful that you fed us today. Yeah.